In this video, we're going to talk about the scaffold composable and also the slot API with Jetpack Compose. If you've used Flutter, by the way, I, I believe they have a the same thing. It's like an equivalent, uh, but it's called a scaffold widget, I believe. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure it's a scaffold widget. If you're familiar with that, this is essentially the exact same thing. So let's uh, let's just get started because I think it's difficult to explain without actually like seeing it in an action. So let's go into recipe list fragment, and this is where we're going to stay for the entire video. So inside of here, we're gonna do some scaffold examples. We're gonna use the scaffold and I'm gonna show you the different kind of slots that are available and what I mean by the slot API, like what is that thing? So first let's uh, let's add a scaffold. So here currently we have a column and then inside that column we have our search app bar and then down below is the box with our list and we have our loading shimmer and all that kind of stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a scaffold here. So just write scaffold and we're going to pass some arguments. So make sure to open this up. So the scaffold, if you can press control and you click on it, it has a bunch of stuff. As you can see, there's a large list. The stuff that we care about in terms of the slot API is the top bar, the bottom bar. Uh, we're going to be talking about the snack bar host, I believe in the next video or the one after the drawer content and the body content. So when it comes to the slot API, like what is this slot API thing? That's what it's talking about. It's talking about top bar, bottom bar, uh, body content and the drawer content. They're called slots because the, it's it's essentially like a template with slots in it. So imagine that uh, this is our UI. Let me just draw what looks like, what might look like a phone screen. So generally you have a couple quote unquote slots. One at the very top, this would be like the top bar. So top bar. This would be the slot for that up here. Then you would have like your, your body content. So let's say body content. And that's kind of like everything inside of here. Then you might have a bottom bar that would be another slot. So bottom, bottom bar, that would be like another slot down here. And then also you might have a drawer. So imagine that this, you know, somehow you had a pull out drawer. This is the pull out drawer thing. Oh, this diagram is terrible, but that would be another, another slot. That'd be like your drawer, your drawer content or whatever. So obviously with this diagram, you can't really tell because I scribbled in the same color and it looks terrible, but I'm sure you get the idea. You have kind of like this top section, which is your top bar. You have kind of this, uh, the body content. I'm not going to cover over the drawer, but it would, it would be back there. You have your bottom bar right here, which would be another slot. And then you have the drawer, which would be kind of this section here. So those are the slots that are available in the scaffold. So let's give this a try in our project. Let's go to our recipe list fragment. I'm going to close the uh, close off the, that scaffold class. Now we do have a top bar, so I'll say top bar. And what I'm going to do is scroll down here. I'm going to take the search app bar. So just grab that, cut it and paste it into the top bar section. Make sure to open this up because it, it takes a function as input. So uh, they're pasted in your, your search app bar. Now just below the top bar, we're going to have the, well, we could have a bottom bar, should be right here, bottom bar. We could have a bottom bar. We don't have a bottom bar in this project, but um, I'll just add it there because we're gonna do a demo later on. And we could also have a drawer content because I'm also gonna do a demo of that. Just gonna leave that empty for now. And then the last thing is the actual content. So that's what goes to this function down here. So for us, what we just did is we got rid of that, uh, that search bar and we put it up in the top bar position. So we don't actually need this column anymore. That's totally unnecessary. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this box. So just cut the box put it inside of our content and make sure to grab the modifier. So I want to make sure to change that color. So cut that, get rid of that, and then add this to the modifier for the box. So modifier, let's clean this up a little bit so it looks a little better. And what was the color? So I pasted that in. I'm just gonna grab background, so dot background and get that color and then just append it, append it right here. So all I've done is, you know, the exact same thing, but I got rid of the column and I put our box, which contains kind of the, the content or the body of this, this fragment, and I put it inside of that function for the scaffold. So currently we have top bar, which is the, the uh, search app bar. We have bottom bar, which is empty. We have drawer content, which is empty. And then we have our regular content. So if I run this, we should see exactly what we saw before. There should be pretty much, well, absolutely no change to the current application. So there's the app running. We have our top bar. We have our body content. If I rotate the screen, you know, everything is the same. No difference. 
everything is good. Basically, that's that's what I want you to, to notice here. Everything is exactly the same. So now let's do an example of like a bottom bar. So let's build a composable for the bottom bar and just kind of put it in there so you can see what it looks like. So we'll do composable function, we'll say my bottom bar. It'll take nothing, return nothing, or sorry, actually it's going to return a bottom navigation composable. Now a bottom navigation composable is built for that bottom bar position. So inside here, I'm gonna add one argument called elevation and just do 12 dp of elevation. Now inside of the bottom bar, if you actually click on this class, so control click on this, it says that you must have uh, bottom navigation items. So if you read the content parameter here, it says destinations inside the bottom navigation should contain multiple bottom navigation items. So inside of this row scope, that's what we wanna use. We wanna use a bottom navigation item. Now each bottom navigation item takes an icon, a selected parameter, so that's whether or not that is the current selected item on that bottom navigation, and it takes an on-click function, which we're going to leave as empty. So the icon is easy. This will be a function. Just say icon, do icons dot default dot. We can pick anything. You can pick anything. It doesn't really matter. I'm just doing this as an example, so any icon will do. And let's just say false for selected. So copy this and paste it. Let's do two more times and just add some, you know, some different image. Maybe this one is search. Maybe this one is, I don't know, account balance wallet. Doesn't matter, just kind of placeholders. And we'll change uh, we'll change one of these to true just to kind of see what happens. So there's our bottom navigation. So then I would go up here, go to bottom bar and say my bottom bar. And now we can run this and take a look and see what that looks like. Okay, there's the app launching and it comes into view and then there's that bottom bar. So these, when I click on them, it gives you know the expected behavior of what a bottom navigation generally, generally looks like. So if you were gonna use a bottom navigation, that's how you would set it up. Of course, you'd have to tie this into your navigation system, which wouldn't be, wouldn't be difficult because if you scroll down here, we have an on-click function. So if you were using navigation components, you know, you could just do like find, uh, well, you could pass the navigation controller as input to the function, uh, like say navigation controller. I don't even know if I have, yeah, I must have nav components in here. Which one is it? Should be, yeah, nav controller, this one right here. So let me click on that. And then you could just do, uh, like inside of the on-click functions, you would do nav controller dot navigate and then navigate accordingly to whatever you were gonna navigate to. So that's kind of just an example of how you would use a bottom nav inside of the slot on the scaffold, the bottom bar slot. So now what about the drawer content? Well, as you might have guessed, this is for a navigation drawer. So let's do another example down below. We'll create another composable. So the drawer is like very much like a blank slate. So if you do at composable function, we'll call it my drawer, take nothing and return nothing. It's very much a blank slate. There's not really like, like if you click on it here or if you click on, um, if you go up here and inside of the drawer content, there's nothing, it doesn't say anything here for, it's not anything special. Whereas if you go to like the bottom navigation, if you click in here, it tells you specifically that you should use bottom navigation items. There's nothing like that for the drawer. It's just like a, it's like a blank slate. That's, that's what I'm trying to say. So inside here, you can do anything. I'm just gonna add some text just to give like a simple example. Let's say item one, and I'm gonna copy this, I don't know, five times. So two, three, four, and five, and then scroll up and just add that true to the uh, drawer content. So I'll say my drawer. And now let's run this and just take a look. You'll see that it's really, it's like a blank slate, like I said. So it's very, very customizable. So there's the app running and let's try and pull out the drawer now. So if I pull to the right, there we go. We have those, we have that column and we have those items. So like I said, it's it's very, it, there's nothing, there's nothing pre-built here that you can use. Like normally you would expect, I guess, a navigation drawer to have like an image at the top and then like the items kind of here. There's nothing pre-built in Compose as far as I know. So you pretty much have to dr um, build like your own drawer and when it comes to navigation, like if you wanted to navigate using the drawer, you would do the same kind of thing that I mentioned in the other example. So you would have like a navigation controller, pass that to, the, to here. And like, you know, whenever you clicked on whatever item, then use the controller to navigate to whatever you were trying to navigate to. That's generally how I would set this up. So uh, that's going to be it. I just wanted to show you an example of the scaffold. Um, show you the different slots that are available. And whenever you hear about like this slot API terminology, all that it means is there's pre-built slots for certain composables that make building the UI easier. Also, um, you know, something else that we're gonna talk about about the scaffold is it makes 
using uh, snack bar is really cool. It has like a snack bar uh, messaging queue kind of built into it, which we're gonna look at not in the next video, I don't think, but maybe the one after. So I think generally for pretty much any UI, you should probably be using scaffold just because it's, you know, you have a spot for the top bar, you have a spot for the middle section, which is the body content. If you're using a bottom navigation, that's easy to put in there too, drawers. It's just an easier streamlined way to, to to build out your kind of UI for each fragment. I think this is great. Um, yeah, nice little addition, very similar to how Flutter does it. If you like the video, don't forget to like the video. Don't forget your scaffolding engagement down below. And in the next video, as I said, we're gonna start talking about snack bars. Hey, what are you still doing here? The video is over. Well, since you're still here, I guess I'll show you the best Android courses that exist on the planet. I got all kinds of high quality courses. If you scroll on down on the homepage, there's the Jetpack Compose one that you're watching right now. There's that course. We have MVI architecture, if you've ever been curious about that. We have my classic powerful Android apps with Jetpack architecture. This shows you everything from, uh, well, the focus on this one is pretty much database caching. caching. We get data from a real API, we cache it, we uh, basically design an app to work when there's no network connection. That is what this project is all about. We have some UI testing, another UI testing, Hilt, which uh, we actually went over in this course. We got clean architecture. This one's probably the best, this is definitely the best course on my website. If you are a professional or you are looking to get into the industry, the skills that you learn in this course are absolutely fundamental. This will give you a big edge in any job environment, whether you're applying or you're already at a job and you wanna just improve your skills. This is a really, really, really high quality course. It's hard, your, your brain might explode while watching it, but you will learn a lot. You'll learn a lot of really, really fundamental skills you know, anything from getting data from the network, caching data, designing different layers, abstracting out the different layers so that you can write unit tests, uh, espresso tests, so UI tests, dagger, navigation components, everything. It's beautiful. Definitely this is the best course on the website.